name is Weston Bohall, uh, BS History, and I graduated in 2006. So after I finished, I ended up going to law school uh, where I became an attorney and uh, my focus is taxation law, um, kind of a one trick tax pony. So that's really interesting. Um, believe it or not, I actually worked at a large firm and somehow along the way they decided to put me in charge of recruitment. Um, and what I kind of found out is history majors make fantastic tax attorneys because uh, for starters, believe it or not, whenever you memorize history, it's in a chronological order according to a numeric value, i.e. a date. So if you have to memorize the Civil War, it's very similar to memorizing the tax code because you learn number, order, sequence, and you associate information with that number. Um, another thing too, whereas people with like an accounting background, they also will go into tax law. Um, in history, there's a big focus on kind of where is this information coming from? Is this correct? And it's not uncommon to for any kind of boilerplate class to have 10 different kind of interpretations on the same historical period. All interpretations are right. They're just different. Um, you'd be surprised how binary um, most business courses are, where it's this is the way it is. There's right and wrong. You know, it's black and white. There's no gray. I found that history majors are very fluent in the gray and can pick out, okay, this argument supports us, this source supports us, this one not so much. Uh, my business majors and other attorneys that have worked for me, um, they're used to kind of black and white. So I think uh, any kind of historical background, you definitely see um, the multitude of interpretations. Yeah. Um, so it's funny, when I uh, came to NES State, I was actually a chemistry major. And uh, I remember my first history class, I thought it was super unfair, right? Because I had to read like six books. It was way more information than I was used to absorbing. You know, in science, it's more like you learn an equation. Um, there's not chapter after chapter. Also, I, was, I felt it was unfair because the second I got to class, the professor would start lecturing and I'd have to write kind of the whole class, I know is a little bit before the laptop days. What I would say from that is if you get into it and you feel like it's unfair and there's too much work to do, uh, you're not the only one thinking that probably, because that's, that's what I thought. Second thing is, is if you're really struggling and you think uh, you need help outside of your teacher and your classmates, um, feel free to ask an upperclassman because someone will help you out there. Uh, even if it's someone in your class that has a handle on it, they'll give you some pointers on what to really focus on. And then your final years, the end of your junior year, senior year, you actually get to evaluate the primary sources and come up with uh, your own version of history. Uh, it's kind of more free thinking. And that is fantastic if you want to learn anything from tax law to welding, because that's kind of the process you'll learn, right? You'll have to learn the basics. You have to learn to you know, uh, differentiate out um, the different opinions on stuff and which one you think is right. And then at the end, when you're ready to expand and come up with something new, it's kind of what you do. You know, you build on that uh, multitude of experience. Just kind of what life's all about, right? You want to be able to tackle problems um, using different methods of thought, um, which history is great at doing. <laughs>